So welcome everybody to this session on the new resource sharing task list. It is August 10th, 2022, and this is Yoel Cortex, Senior Librarian at Ex Libris. This session is part of our ongoing session on the ALMA 2022 Roadmap series. I'm going to send out this link to everybody just in case for whatever reason someone doesn't have this. Those of you who are watching the recording will be able to just search for ALMA 2022 Roadmap or ALMA 2022 Roadmap and Themes webinar series and you will be taken to this page. And we have gone through already several sessions over the past months and now we are on the new resource sharing task list. I will be looking only very briefly today at the PowerPoint presentation. Primarily, we will be looking inside Alma at a live Alma release. And you can download the PowerPoint from here. And also those of you who are in the YouTube video, the links will also be within the description of the video. So you can find the information there as well. And without further ado, let's jump into Alma and let's see what we've got. So let's look just at our table of contents here to see what we'll be doing. Uh, we're going to be looking, as the name of the webinar suggests, at the resource sharing task list. We're going to look at it at, at the different facets in the task list and how it's possible to do a multi-select on facets. There's two different ways to do the multi-select. Then we'll be looking at top list actions, which is a way to perform changes globally on multiple resource sharing, borrowing, or lending requests. Then we'll look at the presentation toggle button, which allows us to do different types of views. Then we'll be focusing on the split view. Then we'll be looking at the labels. Labels is an option which also exists in the purchase order line task list. For those of you who are in the purchase order line task list session may recall that. And then we'll be looking at two different ways of searching for the borrowing and lending requests. One via the persistent search and one via the search from within inside the task list. So that's our plan for today. And you already have the link to what we're going to be looking at today, uh, this presentation. And this feature that we're looking at now is a feature which is going through a gradual uh, exposure to the institutions. It's an opt-in feature, which is what we're doing for many of the new features now. Somebody said there's no sound. I just want to confirm, can other people hear me? Because one person said no sound. I want to make sure it's not a global issue and it's only for that. Okay, other people can hear me. That's fine. Thanks. Okay, so I will point out also that we have a video on how to do or what is the opt-in, opt-out of the new features. And that's right here. I will send this out. This is a video on uh, opting in or opting out of a new feature. So I will send this out as well. So that will give context as to how to opt in and how to opt out for the feature because I don't want to focus specifically on that. We want to focus on the resource sharing task list. So let's begin. So accessing the resource sharing task list is via the Alma menu. I'm not in the configuration menu, I'm in the Alma menu. And from within the Alma menu under fulfillment, there's resource sharing and lending requests and borrowing requests like we've always had in Alma. What's different is what happens after we access these. So let's start, for example, with the borrowing requests. And this is what we're looking at now. This is the new resource sharing task list. We have the facets on the left. We have the entities, the actual borrowing requests in this case. And if we had chosen lending requests, we would have the lending requests on the right pane of the screen. 
like other places where we have the uh, the different entities within a task list, for example, in the PO line task list, the pane here with the facets can be collapsed. I'm clicking here on these two arrows on the bottom right, often referred to as a chevron, these two arrows, and this will collapse it. So now there's more room on the screen, and if I want to access the facets, then I can click here on the facets part and expand it. And then I have the facets open again. So the facet part can open and close via the collapse and via the expand. That's in order to give more information or less information on the screen. This facets tab also can be expanded. For example, one of my partners, the Paris School of Fashion and Design, is by default partially covered because it's a long partner, but we can pull this out and see more. So let's begin our examples with the borrowing requests. However, we will also be showing the lending requests. So I'm back into the borrowing requests, and let's take a look at the different facets. For example, one of the ways of dealing with the borrowing and lending requests previously was via assigned to me, three tabs assigned to me, assigned to others, and unassigned. Those are now facets here within the task list. It's no longer three tabs on the top. And so if we scroll down here, among the different facets are is the assignee. And what differs between this separation of assignment in the task list and the previous one is we don't only have assigned to me, assigned to others, and unassigned, but rather when they're assigned to others, we see who they're assigned to. So we still have the, what, what used to be the three tabs, assigned to me, assigned to others, and unassigned, but we also have specifically who they're assigned to. And this list, when choosing the, the task list, whether it be borrowing requests or lending requests, by default includes only active requests. So if we want to not have active requests, we need to remove this facet. By default, it's only showing facet uh, active. That's for two reasons. Number one, primarily a user would want to see the active ones. And secondly, it increases the performance because instead of showing all of the requests, both the inactive and the active, it's only showing the active, so a smaller amount is easier to deal with and loads quicker. So let's take a look. I can do a facet in two different ways. For example, if I want all of those assigned to Caroline, I can click Caroline's name, and now I see only those assigned to Caroline. You can see on top here that I have a facet here by assignee. And if I were to remove that, another way I could have faceted by only those assigned to Caroline is to select Caroline and then do the apply. So that's two different ways to do a facet. Uh, I can do multiple facets also in two different ways. For example, if we remove Caroline again, I could choose Caroline simply by clicking on the name, as with all facets, and then I can come in further facet. For example, if I want only those assigned to Caroline in status request sent to partner, then I can click here on request sent to partner. And now I have two facets, both the assignee and the status. So I'm looking at a multifacet, assignee and status. And it's doing an and between each of these whole facets. We're going to see later, but I don't want to complicate things at this stage, but we're going to see later that within one specific facet, such as partner, it can do an or Boolean search. But right now it's doing an and among these three facets. Another way we could have done the multifacet, 
rather than first clicking on the assignee and then clicking on the status, is from the beginning, choose which ones I want here. For example, uh, I can say I want only those assigned to Caroline. Instead of clicking on the name, I'm clicking on the on the box there, the, the check box. And then I can come along and say that I want, for example, only those where we don't need patron information or only those which are physical or only those like we did a moment ago, which are in status, uh, a specific status. So now I have multiples checked and then I can click the apply. And then it takes all of those facets, in this case, the assignee, the need patron information and the requested format and automatically brings them all together. So that's the different ways that we can do an assignee simply by either clicking on one of the facets, the actual name of it, and then clicking on another facet and another facet. And each time we see that all of the facets become active here in the refine by. Again, just to stress, I'm gonna do a clear all. And now if I wanna do a multi-facet, I can either click on the name of a facet and then click on the name of another facet and I've got a multi-facet or rather than clicking and clicking on the names, I can select and then select and then select and then come to the, let's not take that one. I have the active partner and I have active and I have older and then I can say apply. So it's either choose the checkbox and apply or it's to click on each of the names of the facets. Uh, I'm just going to check the chat and see if there's any questions or comments that came in and I don't see any questions. Great. Okay, now, another feature in the new resource sharing task list is color coordination. So, for example, if I were to choose all of those that are active for the Gush Etzion University partner, I will be able to see that some of these are assigned to different people. And if... We look at me, I'm assigned in right now as Alicia Hen. Ones that are assigned here to Alicia Hen, we can see are in gray. Anything assigned to another person, for example, this one's assigned to Caroline, this one is assigned to Hannah, they're in different colors. So when I'm scrolling through here, I know anything in white is someone else. Anything in gray, it may appear as a light blue, sometimes going through the WebEx, the colors are slightly different. Uh, then it will be assigned to somebody. I'll know that's assigned to me. And then we can further facet by clicking on that. We're going to see soon here that we also have labels working the same way. So if I want now everything assigned to Caroline, rather than coming back here to the facet list, if I click, that for Caroline. Oh, now, I see Caroline's details. It doesn't bring me the facet. If I want to get Caroline, excuse me on that one, if I want to get everything from Caroline, I can click just on Caroline. Okay. I see a question came in. Let me take a look. Can we set to see abstracts of the resources? Uh, the abstracts of the resources are not set via anything in the facets. And maybe as we go on, we'll get, get more to your specific question, but there's nothing related to the abstracts within the, uh, within the facets. Let's take a look at the OR option, because until now, every time we have the facets on the top, it's doing an and. I'm going to go out and go in, just leave the resource sharing task list and come back in in order to show what I mean. So let's go back in now to fulfillment and resource sharing and borrowing requests. And let's say, for example, that I want to choose two partners in within all of something. 
So if I were to say, for example, I have all of them are active, it's defaulting to the active. And let's say I want everything which is uh, updated yesterday. And I apply. So now it's doing an, an and. It's activity status active and update date yesterday. But if I choose here that I want the Paris School of Fashion and Design, and I also want the Kaisung Taiwan Center for Library Studies, and I say apply. So now this, the activity status and the update date in the active partner, it's doing an and among those three. However, within the active partner, it's doing an or. So it's activity status is active and update status is yesterday, update date is yesterday, and active partner is the Kaisung Taiwan Center for Library Studies or the Paris School of Fashion and Design. So it's not doing, obviously, it's not doing an and because one request can't have two active partners, it can have another partner in the road awaiting, but the active partner can only be one, so these is an or within that one particular uh, status. Let's do the same thing on a lending request, just to see what's going on there. We haven't looked at the lending requests yet. So now we went straight to the lending requests. So same thing here, I'm within the active, and if I were to say the creation date is older and the update date, is, the requested format is physical, and I say apply. So these are all doing an and. However, if I'm taking the Taipei Taiwan Institute of Library and Information Science, as well as the Gushetzion University partner and say apply, again, there's an or within the active partners. So that covers everything we need as far as the uh, facets are concerned. Now let's go to the top list actions. So the top list actions, as I briefly mentioned in the introduction, are ways to be able to globally make changes to borrowing requests or lending requests and they're from here and if we look here for example it's all grayed out and the reason it's all grayed out is because nothing is chosen so nothing can be done so they're not active when nothing is chosen however if i were to choose one or two or more depending on the status now when I go to the actions, now I can change the status, I can remove the requests, and I can manage the labels. Labels is something we're going to be showing shortly. So let's do an example of these top list actions. Let's do that in the borrowing requests. So I'll say fulfillment, resource sharing, and borrowing requests. Defaulting to all of them being active. Here, refined by activity status active. So let's now multi select. Now, another feature here, by the way, is if I were to select everything on the first page, it says 20 rows selected, and then I would go to the next page and also select one or two here, you can see now it says 22 rows selected. That means it's not only selecting on the page that's seen, as was the case in the past in situations where a user would choose entities on a certain page, it saves whatever we chose on one page when we go to the next page. So even though I'm only seeing 20 on the current page, it knows that I've already selected 22 because I scrolled through the different pages and shows from multiple pages. So let's do a little example here of one we want to make some changes on. Let's say, for example, we want all of those which are status created borrowing requests, and I want to change them globally to ready to be sent. 
So we can go to the status here and say, for example, that we want only those which are created borrowing requests. So I'm going to choose here and click apply. And now we have 11 records, which are all in status created borrowing requests. And it may be that some of these I want to globally change now to ready to be sent. So I can multi-select whichever ones I want to change. And then under the actions here, uh, change status. And then I can choose whichever status I want. So here, if I click this down arrow, I can start choosing what I want to change this to. So right now, the created borrowing request, I want ready to be sent. I can scroll down and start seeing which ones I want to choose as ready to be sent and choose it here. Or I can just start typing. This is everything with RE, everything with REA, everything with READ. Choose ready to be sent and change status. And it tells me how many were changed. Now, there may be cases, by the way, that I choose something, but it can't be chosen to um, more than one, more than, it can't be chosen to the change to the certain status. I can't change any status to any status. So it'll say how many were changed, as we saw here. Somebody asked if we can take multiple records and assign them. Uh, in batch? And the answer there is no, at least not at the current time. There's nothing here where I can take five or six records and assign them all to someone. Uh, I can change the status as we saw and manage the labels and remove multiples, but I can't m take m several and assign them all to someone. I can come one at a time here and say assign to but I can't select multiple and assign them all to someone at one in one shot. Let me just see if there's other questions that came in. Okay, can you assign more than one request at a time? No, as we as I said, is it still saying, okay, all right. So someone's, someone mentioned, and I'm gonna talk about that now. It's, it's on my demo script, exactly that. So someone's saying, it's still saying created borrowing requests when does it update? Okay, let me do that again so the so it'll be clear to what, what the person's talking about. I'm going to put them all back to created borrowing requests just so I can show what that person is talking about and also change uh, explain it. So right now, everything here is created borrowing requests. Let's even take them all. And even if they already are, I'll change them that. Okay. Now. Let me come out and come in just so I refresh everything. I'll go back to the beginning here. Okay. Borrowing requests, fulfillment, resource sharing, borrowing requests. When we have our faceted list here, let me get the created borrowing requests. It says here that there are 11 in status created borrowing requests. When I chose one or more, and change these to ready to be sent. It still states created borrowing request here, where I'm moving my mouse, under cultural history of dress and fashion and under Friday is fish and shrimp, created borrowing request. It also has a status here and it also says 11. It updates either the next time I do a facet or access the resource sharing task list. Or if I click this uh, icon here of the two arrows going circular, I'm gonna click it, that also refreshes it. So now it went down to nine, and I don't see those other two, which I changed to ready to be sent. I'll see those other two which are ready to be sent if I come and I select the ready to be sent. So here I've got the Friday is fish and the cultural history of dress and fashion, they say ready to be sent. Once again, to summarize, if we change something here, 
If we change these to a certain status, these are ready to be sent. When I change the status to something else, such as, uh, let's say, conditional, up zeros. Those are ones that you can't change from one status to another, so I'll just change it to created borrowing requests. Thought I'd be a little fancier there. Created borrowing request, okay. I don't see the change until I either refacet, reaccess the resource sharing task list, or click over here where we've got the refresh icon with the two circular arrows. Okay, let me see if any other questions came in. No. Okay. So that's one example of the top the top list actions. Uh, before going into the presentation toggle button that we mentioned, which shows how they can be uh, displayed differently, let's talk about the labels. Uh, labels are a way to be able to, let's even show the PowerPoint just on two slides, slide 57, slide 58. Uh, labels are ways to be able to organize the entities. Uh, we also have it in the PO line task list. Uh, many different systems, if any of you use JIRA, for example, that's another system. Uh, I know some, some libraries have that for their internal stuff that also have labels. Uh, a user can create a label. It's a free text label. If one user creates it, then all other users can see that label and facet by it. Uh, and it can be any free text and it can be in any language. Let's take a look. Um, I guess we really didn't need to look at the PowerPoint. <laughs> we, we, we said it anyway. But let's say, for example, for whatever reason, I want to start organizing some of the active borrowing requests. And I want to organize them in a way that isn't already in one of these predefined um, predefined facets. For example, maybe I want to make one, we, we, the, the team got together and discussed them in a meeting, for example. So there's a couple of ways I can change the labels. Uh, one way is if I edit a request, we're going to talk more about editing in a moment, but one way to edit is, is to click it. I'm going to click, for example, the culture history of dress and fashion. I clicked it. And now within here, there's a button, add label. I'll say add label, and I'll say, for example, discussed in first webinar. So I made one here called Discussed in First Webinar. And now I'll check it. And now it has the label Discussed in First Webinar. Uh, now if I go and add a label to another one, for example, I want to add to uh, the Complete Atlas of Taiwan. I'm going to select the Complete Atlas of Taiwan. And if I go to the labels here or on any of them and we'll talk about the uh, the sections in a moment. So this one already has two labels. And if I want to add another label, I'll click in here and I see the other labels that already exist so I can add a new one. This last one, by the way, was a test that, that means water in, in Hebrew, just to show it can be added in any language. And when I click in here, I'm going to edit. I can choose ones that already existed. So now I've added discussed in first webinar. Uh, these colors, these default colors cannot be changed. Someone asked, can we change the colors? No. Uh, let me add another one. Let's say I want to take this one and this one. 
the DNA barcodes in the world of uh, world atlas of railways. And I'm going to go back to the full view. And here in the actions, we've also got manage labels. So here we can remove labels or we can add labels. For example, I'm going to add the um, Let's add, for example, the fish. Assigned to selected, and then it assigns those. Updated labels successfully. In order to view your changes, refresh the task list. That's what we saw before. When we use the top list actions, we need to refresh. I'm going to refresh. Now, all of these, let's give another one the discussed in first session. I'll come here. And let's just edit this. Here we'll say again, discussed in first session, check. Okay. These automatically become facets. So for example, now on the left, I have three of them with discussed in first session. And if I want all of those that have that label, I can just click it. And I get them all. These are all of those which are discussed in first session. I can also just click that and get into the facet. So, for example, if I were to have anything with a facet, or even I'll get rid of the these facets. And refresh. So now I've got everything. And if I want to get all of those that have discussed in first webinar, if I click it, it automatically gives me those that are uh, I, I get the details of this one. Someone asked, are we calling notes labels now? Let me get the exact wording. Are you calling notes labels now? No, we still have the notes, but the labels is in addition to the notes. They're still here. I can still put in a note. Please give me hardcover. Uh, but the labels is another way to be able to assign some, some other value to multiple or even one or multiple requests and then be able to facet by it. It's not a replacement for any of the notes. I've got the note here inside the request form. I've got this general note. Uh, we may consider purchasing this resource. So I have the regular notes, but I also have the labels. So it's not that we're calling them labels now. It's in addition to the notes. Okay, I hope that answered that question. All right, let's go on. Um, someone says, in my screen, labels is grayed out. How do we turn it on? Uh, the labels is automatically on. I don't know where on your screen you're referring to. If it's in the top list actions, uh, it'll be grayed out if nothing is chosen. And when you're in a request, we're going to talk more about the editing of requests. You can just click in the area of the label and choose something. I'm going to get rid of this so it has none of them. And now I have no labels. And if I want to add a label, I just go inside the add label and start typing or choose an existing. Okay, let's go on. Um, okay, someone else asked. See, there's a lot of interest in the labels. That's nice. Um, so someone says, can I make the labels only viewable for me? No. When a label is made, all users see it. Someone says it's not possible to use blanks in labels, right? That's correct. It's not possible to use blanks in labels. If you want two words, you should use an underline between them, like I did here in my example of discussed in first webinar. So I wanted multiple words, so I just put underlines between them. 
Uh, someone says, this is so good, can think of so many uses for these non-standard labels. For example, waiting for budget decision, contacting requester, etc. Okay, thanks for the suggestions. Maybe I will even take that to the side <laughs> and use those as, as examples. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm just going to save those. And maybe I'll even use those as examples. Waiting for budget decision. Okay, thanks for pointing that out. Someone says, can you delete a label not used anymore? Uh, yes, you would delete it from, uh, once it's deleted from all of the entities that have it, it's deleted. For example, if I were to take these two that have the label Taiwan, which I used in a different session, um, I could, well, if I say now, by the way, if I were to say here, remove labels, or man, if I were to say here, manage labels, remove labels, it's going to remove the labels uh, in general. Uh, if I come in here, though, there's only two of them with Taiwan. So if I were to come into this one and get rid of this Taiwan, save. And now I only have one with Taiwan, at least, oh, and discussed in first set, worst webinar. And come in here. Let's, let's do it. It'll be quick. Get rid of this one. And save. And here. We're going to be looking more at all of the different options for editing. I'll get rid of this one, save, and there should be one more now, and two more. So let's get rid of this one. It's not that these labels remain with a big long list of every label that used to exist at one time. Now there's no more label called Taiwan. If I refresh here, I've got nothing, and if I were to come in fresh, just as an example, come into fulfillment, borrowing requests, there's no label called Taiwan anymore. You can see there's no facet with it, and if I were to go and add another label within the, ex uh, oh, it has to refresh there. Uh, the, it, it's gone. There's no... You can see nothing has it there. Okay, let's go on now uh, because we want to make sure we cover the other options. I'm glad to see there's there's a lot of uh, interest. Once you play around with the labels for five minutes or so, you'll see what's going on. How many of you, by the way, have already turned this on? How many of you on the call, just raise your hands. So oh, 82 people. How are, are in the call? How many people are already using the new resource sharing task list? Okay, I see some hands going up. I see Maya's with us. Hello, Maya. Okay, and Anshi's with us. Hello, Anshi. Okay, so there are people already using it. So I hope this isn't boring for you, those of you already using it. Let's talk about the presentation toggle button. We've already seen a little bit, as I've played around here, of different ways of displaying the data. Okay, someone said it's not boring. All right, good. Because <laughs> if you've been playing around with it for a couple of months, I, don't, I hope I'm uh, adding something. Anyway, so right now we're looking at what's called the list view. And we already showed at the very beginning that we can make this list view a little larger by collapsing the facets. Now, this is called the presentation toggle button here because this changes the way it can be viewed. So we're in, the, we're in the list view. Then there is split view, and there's three different split views, narrow, medium, and wide. Uh, now, I'm on a, a laptop with a projector going through a webinar 
So the way it's displaying, it might be playing around with funny resolution things. But depending on your resolution, different lists, different list views may be more or less appropriate. Also, depending on what you're looking for. So, for example, if I go to the split view medium list, I see here uh, it's split. On the left, I see the brief information of whatever I'm looking at. I know which one I'm looking at because it's got this blue line next to it. It's selected. And in the right, I see the details. If I choose, for example, now the DNA barcodes, now in the right, I see the DNA barcodes, uh, all the details. I can scroll through and change it, edit it, etc. And if I were to choose, for example, the, the narrow view, or if I were to drag this, we see that now I see more of the brief view, which is no longer so brief, but you see now I have two columns here. I've got where it says the title, by, the, the partner, the status, and then I have the requested format, the ISBN, etc. If I were to move this to the left, or if I were to choose here the split view, uh, narrow view or split view, full view. Now I see less. Now I don't see the ISBN and I don't see the requested format, but I see more information on the right. So you can either choose here the narrow, the medium, or the wide, or you can just drag this to whatever is most appropriate. But you can see it doesn't take the resolution and make it all smaller to fit it in. It changes the display. Again, we're looking at this one here called drifting. And when we go slightly to the right, now we have all of a sudden more information. The requested format, ISBN, requester, date and time it was created, the external identifier, and the label. And when I move it slightly to the left, now I don't have those anymore, but I have more information here. Then there's the full view where I see one request at a time. Now let's move to the editing. I see we only have 17 minutes left. So there's two different ways to edit. Uh, let's go to the full list again. So I'm gonna put this back to the list view and we have no facets right now. And let's say I want to edit one of these. I'm just going to click on there. Okay. Uh, when we click on something, let's go back to the list view. I'll do that a little more slowly. When we click on any anywhere in a record, for example, I'm going to say uh, winning every moment, soul conversations with the Balatanya. If I click anywhere on this, I'm going to click it. Now I got into the split screen. One way to edit is not clicking the edit button. I'm going to show that later. Is simply to scroll through here and start making the changes. And to get to a part of the request, I can either scroll as I am now or choose the sections here and go right to a specific part. For example, if I want to go right to the notes, I'll choose notes. And that automatically brings me to the notes. And if I want to go to the gener the request form, I'll click the request form and it automatically goes there. So I can either uh, s click the sections or I can scroll through. And then the editing part, I can choose here to go to wherever I want and say, for example, uh, that I want to make a note here from the requester. Um, has exam on, let's say, August 12th. In other words, needs this quick. Uh, so I can edit from right in here. Um, I can add the notes here. Anything that I can edit, I can click right inside here. Here, 
I'm not even clicking the pencil here. Just clicking here, the pencil is showing, the pencil icon is showing that it's something that can be edited. But I'm not clicking on edit. I'm just clicking with inside the, uh, the, the right pane here. Let's choose add note here. And now I can add another note. For example, um, we will be purchasing this for Professor A. Hasu's class on libraries in Taiwan, for example. And that's automatically saved as a note here. Uh, another way to do the edit is to click this edit button, and then there's something called a slide out panel. When I click it, we're going to see that the whole request is going to open up slightly to the left. Let's take a different one this time, the hidden Freud. So I'm going to click edit. And now that's the slide out panel. The whole uh, panel came out. And here we can make the changes. For example, I'll say I want the third edition. And uh, that's all I want here. Oh, I'll add a note also. I see this one already has a note, so I can do it the old-fashioned way. I don't say old-fashioned. The, the, the previous way I can also do from within the slide-out panel. Um, this is Sue needs this for her class. Okay. Add. Uh, Someone asked if we can add the partner from within that first edit. So first of all, I can add partners from within this edit. I'm going to close it and go back in to differentiate. When I click this edit, which opens the slide out panel, I can add a partner here within the Rota tab. I can't play around with the rota or the partners when I'm in this section here. I, if I want to add a partner and it's not at the time that the request is being created, I click the edit over here. Someone asked if we have a spell check built in. Is there a spell check available for the note section? I believe that within the browser that's taken care of, let me click add note again. I am spelling something wrong. Yes, okay. So the spell check is dependent on your browser. But I think most browsers will have it. So there is a spell check. I, I, I haven't seen that it's not. But my browser has it. I'm in a, a regular Firefox. I didn't install anything special here. And then I spelled it so bad I can't even choose the proper word. Okay, now he should know to give me the proper word. Great. Okay, so there is a spell check, but it's not an Alma spell check. And that's in many places, not just here. Uh, that you can get something automatically changed. I'm going to create a request because I want to do something for the person who asked about adding the partners. I'm going to just give this a title. Uh, the International Book of Webinars. And that's enough. Requester will be Anna. And I'm not going to click Add Partners. And that should be enough. So let's see, internet, internet, what did I write here? International. Save. Okay. So this doesn't have a partner. The request exists. And if I'm in here in my list of borrowing requests, I can either search for that or I have a facet by creation date. 
should say today. There we are, today. So here it is. If I come in here, <clears throat> so I've got my sections here. And if I want to add a partner to this now, I would click the edit and then go to the rota and then go to the add partner and then choose a partner from here for example i will take the taipei taiwan institute of library and information science okay so that's adding the partners from within the edit all right let's move on let me just see if there's any more questions but in the last eight minutes i want to talk about the different searches um can you replace the label with another one for example all fish will become water uh no you can't do a global replace of the labels you would need to add one and delete the other one uh is okay and then the part there's a question about the partner we answered there's a question about the spell check we answered okay so now let's take a look at something about the searching because this confused people so uh, at least one person in a previous session an internal session so i want to make sure it's clear to everybody let me get rid of this facet all right so i have 39 borrowing requests here uh there's a search here uh, from within the list that is already faceted. And then there's also a search up here by borrowing requests. So for example, if I were to come up here and search by borrowing requests and say title and say, for example, the word Atlas, I have two of them. So there's two borrowing requests with the word Atlas in the title. However, if I were to come all the way in, uh, brand new to the borrowing requests, and for example, say that I want active partners to be the Taipei Taiwan School of Library and Information Science, or the Pescadores Island University, uh, or the National Technical University, uh, excuse me, the Kai Sung Library. So now I have it faceted. Here, when I search by title for Atlas, now I only get one. So here, when I'm searching within the, t the task list, I got one. When I searched on top here, I got two. I'm saying this only because somebody was confused by it. It might be clear to everybody. So when I'm searching here, where I'm searching right now, I'm searching within the pre-faceted list. And I'm faceted by these three partners. And within these three partners, there's only one borrowing request with the word Atlas in the title. However, when I search here, I'm not connected at all to any facets. It's bringing me a brand new search, and therefore I've got two. This on top is called the persistent search. Someone asked, do you have to do the facets before searching? You can do them before or after. Uh, for example, if I uh, if I were to come in, I always like to come in fresh so that it's a it's a clear example. If I come in fresh here to the borrowing requests, I could fast it in advance, or I can come and do my search here, and say I want everything with word from title atlas, and then I can start uh, faceting and say. Well, I only want those with status created borrowing requests, and I only want those with the Taipei Taiwan uh, Institute of Library and Information Science. So I can facet before or after.
Uh, anything else in the chat? Is there a keyword search? I assume you mean a keyword search from within the facet because here there is a keyword search in the persistent search. Let's just confirm that before I, before I close because I don't want to say something wrong, but I'm nearly certain there's a keywords here. Okay. E. Oh, I don't see a keyword. Item barcode title notes. No, no keyword here. Unless we go into the list of uh, indexes and go take a look. But otherwise, no. Here, also no. So no. Uh, someone says, might it be possible for advanced search capabilities to be extended to resource sharing requests? Okay, so what the person is referring to is here, if I choose, for example, all titles, we have an option here to go to the uh, advanced search. And within the advanced search, there is no bar. Um, ah, that brings me back to the regular search. So there is no, what the person is referring to is there is no advanced search on the borrowing request. Regarding your question, might it be possible? At the current time, no, and, there, and I'm not aware personally of any plans to add that. Uh, why is there no multiple search options? I want to search all the requests for a particular client that went to a specific library. Uh, I don't have a, a, an answer why there is no particular multiple search options. Uh, I assume you mean multiple search options the advanced search where multiple fields can be shown simultaneously. However, I will point out that with the ability to do the multiple facets, in essence, there is a multiple search options because you can choose multiple facets here. But if it's a field that's not in the facet, then you can't search simultaneously for both of them. Uh, okay, we are at the end here. Are there any other final questions or comments from anybody? You have links to the PowerPoint. You have linked to the YouTube video on enabling the new features. And we will be posting this to our YouTube channel and sending out a message that it's been posted. So we thanks everybody. We thank everybody for joining and we hope to see you in the rest of our sessions. Have a nice day.